now we proceed to find out the scattered wave amplitude uh, this is the representation of electron number density uh, Fourier coefficient uh, ng summation is done over all possible uh, g reciprocal lattice vectors which are available in the system and uh, electron number density is equal to summation ng exponential i g dot r where g is the reciprocal lattice vector and this n of g which is the Fourier coefficient it will decide the scattered wave amplitude so how we how uh, uh, it does that we will uh, see first of all we will see the reciprocal lattice vector what is meant by the reciprocal lattice vectors or how to represent them we have already seen uh, if a1 a2 a3 are the uh, crystal uh, vectors or the primitive translation vectors in the space lattice and if b1 b2 b3 are the corresponding uh, primitive lattice vectors in the reciprocal uh, space uh, then we have already seen that uh, they are uh, given by this equation b1 is equal to 2 pi into a2 cross a3 divided by a1 dot a2 cross a3 in some other in most of the textbook this is the representation or notation which i have taken from kittel uh, in most uh, other textbooks you will see that uh, space lattice primitive vectors are given by a b c and uh, corresponding reciprocal lattice vectors are given by uh, a star b star and c star okay uh, but here we are taking a1 a2 a3 uh, for the space uh, lattice and b1 b2 b3 for the reciprocal lattice these are the set of uh, primitive translation vectors in space lattice and reciprocal lattice and they are given by this equation and uh, the uh, uh, a, a vectors and b vectors will satisfy this condition b a dot a j is equal to 2 pi delta i j and uh, points in the reciprocal space are given by the reciprocal lattice vectors uh, so uh, this is uh, for it can be represented as g is equal to uh, v1 b1 plus v2 b2 plus v3 b3 b1 b2 b3 are the reciprocal lattice vectors uh, primitive uh, reciprocal lattice vectors v1 b2 v3 are uh, integers and v1 v2 v3 are actually the h scale values so all possible combinations uh, will give you a set of g vectors and that is what we call the reciprocal lattice vectors Uh, and why g is so chosen uh, it, it should satisfy certain condition for example i told you earlier n of r uh, and it should be having a translation symmetry which means n of r should be equal to n of r plus t uh, so g should should be so chosen this is the equation for g that we have considered and the translation vector is given by this equation uh, so you can see that uh, space lattice primitive vectors are appearing in the translation uh, vector and uh, G is composed of uh, the corresponding reciprocal lattice vectors and you have got certain combination of integers uh, both in the in the equation for T and in the equation for G and uh, it should be because of this uh, requirement uh, the choice of uh, the correct choice of G and T like this it should ensure that n of R which is given by this equation is invariant under a translation uh, uh, T capital T or n of R plus T should be equal to n of R which uh, if you substitute these values you will see that uh, this condition will be satisfied and both will be n of R plus T and n of R will be giving rise to the same equation summation over uh, G ng exponential i g dot r and now we will see the diffraction condition uh, in terms of the reciprocal lattice vectors we will specify them there is a statement or the theorem which states that the set of reciprocal lattice vectors g decide the possible x-ray reflection condition uh, so why this is important is because uh, so far we have uh, represented uh, diffraction condition in terms of Bragg uh, equation or in terms of low equation now uh, the, these were the two uh, different ways in which we could uh, represent diffraction condition now we are going to uh, express it in terms of uh, the reciprocal lattice vector G and we will proceed to find out uh, the scattered wave amplitude in a given direction for that we consider this diagram we think about the sample like this or the crystal specimen and inside that we consider a, uh, an infinitesimally small volume element given by dv uh, this k represent the incident uh, x-ray vector 
uh, monochromatic uh, plane wave which is incident on the specimen and it undergoes uh, a diffraction uh, after reflection from certain planes in the crystal and it is let us say it is propagating along a direction given by k prime so this is the incoming o wave and uh, this is the outgoing wave represented by k and k prime rep uh, respectively and uh, we think about this o as a point or the origin and with respect to that uh, the position of the this particular cell that we are cons uh, particular uh, uh, small volume that we are considering is placed at a position uh, given by the vector r and this is the angle phi so when you think about uh, the incoming wave it is making by the time uh, or the incoming wave by the time it reaches this element and this element uh, or which is the origin o is the origin it is having a path difference of this much uh, which is equal to r sin phi okay and uh, in terms of this angle you can represent that uh, okay that is the uh, path difference and corresponding to that path difference which is r sin phi uh, you can write down the phase difference if you multiply that uh, with 2 pi by lambda so this 2 pi by lambda i will write it as k and uh, in terms of this angle you can uh, say that this is equal to this 2 pi by lambda r sin phi that is equal to k dot r k dot r in terms of this angle okay so we have got the uh, phase difference of the wave which is hitting uh, the volume element dv and uh, the incident wave uh, reaching the point o uh, those two will be having a phase difference equal to k dot r similarly the wave uh, propagating from uh, these two points the, the the origin and these two uh, this particular point uh, when it is propagating again it will be making a, a phase difference corresponding to this path difference this path difference will can be written in terms of k prime so similar to this one uh, that uh, phase difference can be written as phase difference of the propagating wave can be written as minus k prime dot r so that means uh, the incident wave and the outgoing wave will be having a total phase difference uh, with respect to the point o and uh, r with respect to uh, the scattering which is taking place from these two points it will be having a total phase difference equal to sum of these two which is k minus k prime dot r uh, so we can uh, represent it using the wave vector diagram uh, so this is a portion of the previous uh, picture that uh, that I showed you and you can uh, construct this wave vector diagram like this you can you have got one direction this k prime direction uh, this is one direction and you have got the other one other direction k direction uh, it is this one uh, okay actually uh, because elastic scattering is taking place uh, you can actually uh, you know you 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 can use this as k or this as k prime so anyway uh, for this uh, uh, explanation we are taking it like this you this is k let us take this to be k and this is k prime uh, so uh, when you look at this wave vector diagram you can see that k plus delta this is delta k so k k plus delta k is equal to k prime uh, so if you uh, relate this to the evolved construction that we had seen earlier you have got an incident wave represented by k and outgoing wave represented by k prime and this is the diagram that we have so uh, this picture this wave vector diagram uh, can be related to this one and this uh, delta k in that uh, evolved construction we had seen that this is equal to 1 by d and that 1 by d a uh, set of 1 by d is represented by the reciprocal lattice uh, vector uh, g uh, so as per Bragg condition uh, any possible uh, scattering uh, vector this delta k is referred to as a scattering vector uh, so we had seen that this evolved construction uh, so if when you represent this uh, this is actually the geometric interpretation of Bragg condition so this is delta k which is referred to as the uh, scattering vector so as per Bragg's condition any possible scattering vector should be equal to some reciprocal lattice vector g now how to use these to get the scattered intensity what we are going to do is uh, the scattered away from uh, that small volume element uh, that will be considered uh, so uh, the scattered wave amplitude uh, in the direction k prime it should be 
proportional to the local electron density function which is n of r which is present in this volume and uh, as we had seen the phase difference between uh, the waves uh, waves which are uh, propagating from uh, the uh, position where that small volume was considered with respect to the origin it was it has it was having a phase difference equal to k minus k dot uh, k k minus k prime dot r corresponding to that it means it, it will be having a phase factor e raised to i k minus k prime dot r so it should be proportion the scattered wave amplitude should be proportional to n of r and it will be having a phase factor this much so using that argument we can represent the scattering amplitude in the direction k prime uh, when the x-ray beam is hitting uh, the sample uh, and if you consider the scattering which is taking place from a volume element dv and after the scattering if the wave is propagating along the k prime direction uh, that intensity will be proportional to that scattered wave intensity will be proportional to the uh, local electron density n of r and it will be having a phase factor is equal to this much uh, so uh, from the whole specimen you can integrate uh, you can do the volume integration and uh, that will give you the scattered wave amplitude from the whole specimen uh, in the direction k prime so that is uh, what is written here uh, we k minus k prime uh, you we use this uh, relation from the previous wave vector diagram and we will write k minus k prime is equal to minus delta k okay so that is what we are doing and here <coughs> this uh, uh, can be uh, related to uh, in terms of the reciprocal lattice vector g uh, we write it as g minus delta k dot r f is equal to summation over g uh, because here what we have is we have got this um, electron number density uh, distribution which is given in terms of uh, the reciprocal lattice vector like this n of r is equal to uh, this equation so here this n of r will be uh, replaced using this equation so ultimately what we have is uh, we dv and dv it is there only this n of r is written in terms of the reciprocal lattice vector which we have considered as in the Fourier expansion of the uh, the, the electron number distribution function uh, so we will be having this term uh, for example we will be having eg dot r and here we have got delta k dot r so we combine that and we will be getting this expression for scattered wave amplitude uh, which is given uh, uh, given by the scattered scattering wave delta k now uh, up in earlier we had seen uh, when you proceed uh, uh, further we will see the diffraction condition uh, or uh, right now we had seen that this delta k the scattered uh, scattering vector it should be equal to one of the reciprocal uh, lattice vectors so delta k should be equal to uh, g so in this equation that we have right now seen for the scattering wave amplitude when g is equal to delta k then this f will be equal to uh, this factor will become 1 and this will be uh, that will give you ng and this volume integral of dv will give you the whole volume so uh, when delta k is equal to g which is the scattering condition uh, then we will be getting f is equal to the scattered wave amplitude is equal to volume into ng where ng is the Fourier coefficient so that is why we say uh, the scattered wave amplitude in a particular direction it is governed by the Fourier coefficient and uh, when this condition is not satisfied uh, this uh, intensity or f will be negligible so that means uh, only when delta k is equal to g uh, this will give, give rise to uh, scat uh, uh, appreciable scattered intensity in the direction specified by delta k and another thing that you have to remember is that elastic scattering is taking place in this case which means energy of the photo uh, x-ray photons will be conserved uh, only the direction will be changing uh, so that means in magnitude wise k equal to k prime uh, and uh, earlier we had seen delta k should be uh, equal to g which is the diffraction condition so we, uh, we will see k plus g is equal to k prime uh, from the previous wave vector diagram that I, I showed you uh, so that means we, uh, k square uh, can be written as k prime square uh, so we will be uh, arriving at this equation k plus g the whole square is equal to k square uh, so that gives you uh, this condition 
2 k dot g plus g square is equal to 0 we can take this g for example if positive g is a reciprocal lattice vector then negative g will also be a reciprocal lattice vector so that means uh, we can write it conveniently like this 2 k dot g is equal to g square so this is also another way in which we represent the Bragg equation in terms of the reciprocal lattice vector Now we will see how uh, we proceed to see the Fourier analysis of the basis. So this is the diffraction condition delta k is equal to g. When that condition is satisfied, the scattering amplitude from the uh, from a crystal of uh, n unit cells we can write it as f of g f g uh, that that is equal to n into integral over the over a single cell of the previous equation that we had written dv n of r exponential minus i g dot r uh, so this quantity is what we have right now seen as th uh, of, of this quantity uh, we will represent it as the structure factor sg uh, so that structure uh, factor when you look at this equation you will see that it is an integration over a single cell and that single cell should be in such a way that uh, r equal to 0 uh, corresponds to uh, the corner of the cell and the electron concentration n of r uh, will be uh, this n of r in the case of this cell it will be contain it will consist of uh, different atoms and uh, the total electron di distribution of that particular cell it will be a con superposition of all the contribution uh, given by individual atoms each of these atoms will be having unique um, I mean you consider a unit cell and uh, that is what the integration is done over that particular cell and uh, that cell will be consisting of different atoms and each of these atoms will be having its own um, uh, electron distribution so for electron uh, distribution function of that particular cell will be a superposition of the electron uh, electron contribution of the electron density from individual atoms in the cell now uh, that is uh, what we are using here if uh, j if you uh, if you use uh, the the number j to represent a particular atom then uh, the if <coughs> j is the position rj if j is the is an integer and uh, if you can use rj as the position vector of that particular atom or the jth atom if the position vector of the jth atom if you are taking it as rj then uh, this electron distribution function of that cell uh, can be written as a summation over j nj r minus rj this is the electron concentration at r due to uh, the summation is up to s so that means it, this is s number of atoms which are present in that single cell uh, so uh, so that means um, uh, each of these atoms will be having its own uh, contribution to the electron uh, distribution because the number of electrons associated with each of these atoms will be different so each of these atoms e each of these atoms can be different uh, so each of the atoms will be having its own contribution to the electron distribution function n of r of the cell uh, and it is a superposition of all the electron uh, distribution uh, contribution given by each of these atoms spe spe specified by uh, the integer j now uh, we will see uh, the structure factor so in this e equation uh, integra integral over the cell the previous equation that we have considered dv uh, n of r exponential minus i g dot r in this equation uh, here uh, we uh, define the structure factor as sg is equal to summation over j d, uh, dv here this n of r we are taking this n of r this is the uh, structure factor that we had so here in the in the expression for n of r we use this equation uh, and then we just write it like this uh, integral dv nj r minus rj exponential minus i g dot r here this r minus rj we will write it as a row uh, so that means this r can also be written in terms of rows so we'll be left with this equation 
uh, we'll be taking this exponential minus i g dot r j outside the integration sign and the integration will be performed over uh, the cell like this over the volume so that will give you uh, this uh, term which we call the structure factor S G now another uh, quantity that we can see uh, here is atomic form factor so in the previous equation for structure factor like this uh, the quantity dv n j rho exponential minus i g dot r uh, this is referred to as the atomic form factor and we use the symbol f to represent that so corresponding to the jth atom you have got a, a form factor atomic form factor for that particular atom which is represented as f j which means you can write down the structure factor like this exponential i g dot uh, r j and small f j which is the atomic form factor so you have got the structure factor uh, using this equation i mean represented by this equation sg is equal to this one so this is an important quantity and here this j represents or rj represents a position vector of the jth atom uh, in the cell so rj is equal to uh, we can represent rj uh, in terms of uh, the translation vectors a1 a2 uh, primitive sorry primitive translation vectors a1 a2 a3 or the crystal vectors uh, uh, which represents the direction along which we can expect periodicity in that particular system uh, so this is the uh, uh, this is the representation of rj which is the position vector of j atom in the cell uh, so this is the structure factor and uh, for re reflection corresponding to a particular uh, reciprocal lattice vector G uh, we have a reciprocal lattice vector which is represented in terms of B1, B2 and B3 like this uh, so we can write uh, for that combination for a, for a given G and for a given uh, atomic position uh, when you take G dot RJ which is appearing in the structure factor uh, you will be having you can uh, take this uh, dot product and you will be getting 2 pi uh, v1 xj plus v2 yj plus v3 zj okay uh, so that means you can write down the structure factor corresponding to a combination of integers v1 v2 and v3 uh, which actually stands for the hkl values uh, so in terms of the hkl values we will be having the structure factor as sg is equal to this one atomic form factor into exponential minus i 2 pi uh, v1 xj plus v2 yj plus v3 zj now we will use this result uh, to uh, find out what are the possible uh, what is the uh, specific nature of the structure factor of bcc lattice and fcc lattice so for that we consider bcc lattice means uh, it will be having the basis of the uh, BCC basis referred to the cubic cell BCC basis it will be uh, you can think about the BCC basis which means uh, the group of atom which is repeating uh, so you will be having identical atom at one corner and at the body center point uh, so that means uh, the uh, value it will be having the BCC basis is uh, represented like this it will be having identical atoms at in this equation you have got xj yj zj which represents the position uh, so in the case of bcc basis it will be having identical uh, atoms identical atoms at, at one corner point and uh, corresponding uh, body center point of the of the unit cell so that means it will be having identical atoms at x1 y1 z1 equal to 0 and x2 y2 z2 equal to half okay that corner point and the body center point uh, so here we have got xj by j, uh, is at j so if it is a bcc lattice you have got uh, summation over j j should run from 1 to 2 because uh, two identical atoms are present uh, that will be representing representing the basis one corner atom and one body center atom so j it will take the value 1 and 2 for the case of bcc lattice and uh, at that point uh, we will be having i mean uh, that position is represented by x1 y1 is at equal to 0 and x2 y2 is at 2 equal to uh, half 
okay so then what we do is we will use that uh, idea in this e expression for the structure factor we, we will uh, do the summation over these two values of j and when we do that you will be getting the structure factor corresponding to the BCC lattice as uh, f into 1 plus exponential minus i pi v1 plus v2 plus v3 v1 v2 v3 these are the h k l values so when you look at this value uh, what the idea is uh, when do we have high intensity the structure factor uh, it is it is actually the scattered wave amplitude which is represented in a in a particular way and this represent the scattered wave amplitude so for the bcc lattice uh, we'll be getting high uh, scattered wave amplitude uh, or low uh, scattered wave amplitude when these two conditions are satisfied so because we have got this exponential minus i pi uh, combination of integers here so when v1 plus v2 plus v3 uh, when that is equal to odd uh, it will become zero and when v1 plus v2 plus v3 is even it will give you 2f uh, this will become 1 plus 1 and it will become 2f so that means in the case of FCC lattice uh, you can expect uh, a scattered intensity high scattered intensity when uh, v1 plus v2 plus v3 or h plus k plus l when that is equal to uh, an even integer that will result in scattered wave amplitude so that means uh, when you look at the xrd uh, xrd pattern of a particular material and if you are getting different peaks uh, each of those peaks and if the corresponding hkl values are tagged uh, you examine those values and uh, when you take the sum of those h scale values if it if it is an odd integer it means uh, it is uh, that the sample is not uh, definitely bcc so that is how you you use the information about the structure factor to find out what type of uh, uh, what type of crystal crystalline arrangement that sample has got uh, similarly for FCC the basis of FCC structure with respect to the cubic L lattice uh, you can think about one corner atom and it will be having equal identical atoms at three phases adjacent phases which are identified by these points 0 half 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 0 half 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 0 so all these points will, you, will be occupied by identical atoms in the case of FCC basis. Uh, so we will proceed as before and we'll find out the structure factor for FCC you will get this equation and this equation when you examine you will see that uh, if this uh, v1 v2 and v3 if they are uh, if they are if all of them are even or if all of them are odd uh, this s will become 4f but if v1 v2 v3 if they are combination of odd and even uh, numbers then s will become zero so that means the scattered wave amplitude which is given by this structure factor uh, that can be uh, non-zero that can be high only when the combination of this h scale uh, miller indices which is given by v1 v2 and v3 here if all of them should be odd or all of them should be even uh, for fcc lattice so that will also give you an idea for example when you if you have got an xrd pattern you examine the peaks uh, which are tagged using their corresponding miller indices and if those miller indices you examine them and if they satisfy this condition then you can uh, you you understand that uh, the sample is having an fcc lattice now finally this can be uh, this is a physical uh, significance of structure factor uh, using a classic example of uh, of a body center system body center cubic uh, lattice we will uh, just see what is the physical what uh, you know what is the physical significance of this structure factor structure factor why is it called structure factor is because it gives you an idea about the structure of uh, the uh, crystal uh, lattice for example uh, if it is a uh, bc uh, sorry uh, if it is a bcc lattice let us consider this 100 zero zero plane uh, so this is 100 zero zero plane uh, let us say this is the first plane and this is a, uh, this is the 100 uh, zero zero plane so this is the top plane and this is the bottom plane of the uh, of the uh, uh, 
system uh, bcc system so if it is bcc that means uh, at the middle also these are the body center points and uh, when you think about the three dimensional arrangement of all these points you will see that uh, uh, just like uh, this uh, set of atoms which are present in the top plane and the bottom plane there will be a similar plane at the at the middle uh, oh, middle portion as well uh, so uh, actually we do not see a reflection from uh, 1 0 0 planes in the case of body centered cubic lattice why is it so is because uh, uh, when i when i say 1 0 0 plane uh, so if this is the 1 0 0 plane then uh, this means this is a top plane and this is the bottom plane and if you think about the bracket condition that is to be satisfied the waves which are reflected from this plane and the this plane if they undergo constructive interference they will be having a phase difference of 2 pi so that mean but in the case of bcc lattice there is an identical plane uh, at the at the middle also contributed by all the atoms which are uh, positioned at the body center point so that means the refle uh, there from that plane also the reflection will be taking place and since the phase difference between these two if we expect that there will be constructive interference the phase difference between these two should be 2 pi which means the phase difference between adjacent planes should be pi so that means when you put that in the structure factor equation we will be having you know 1 plus e raised to minus i pi and it will be uh, giving you uh, the zero, zero value so that means there is no uh, reflection amplitude we can observe uh, from uh, 1 0 0 corresponding to reflection from 1 0 0 planes uh, of BCC lattice so this can be used as uh, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, physical significance of structure factor the structure factor why is it called structure factor is because it gives you some idea about the structure of the the, the unit cell uh, that constitutes that lattice